Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. Today's special guest is truly extraordinary because he is a world champion in three different sports. He was the best in the world in racquetball, jujitsu, and mixed martial arts. He's the founder and owner of the extremely popular Egan's Boot Camp and the author of his awesome book, Becoming Relentless. He is the one and only Egan Inouye, and today we are going beyond world championships. Hey, Egan. How's it going? Great thanks, to have you here. Thanks for having me. Now, you've done so many things in your life, and you continue to do some amazing things, but everybody in Hawaii, we always have to ask, what schools did you go to? <laughs> and that's a Hawaii thing. Right? That is. I know, so I started off Manoa Elementary School, okay. then I went to Stevenson, and then I went to Roosevelt, and then I went to University Lab School. Cool. Yeah, then I went to University of Hawaii, dropped out after two years, and then finished it off 10 years later. Wow. Yeah. And then your family, you, you have such a beautiful family, and yeah. your wife, Marcia, mm -hmm. um, you guys are like a great team together. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about, about Marcia and your five kids. So we got five, two are out of the house. We have three now in the house still, young. Um, two of them just started school today, okay. which is great. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, Marcia pretty much runs, I would say she runs the show. Yeah. Like she keeps everybody in order and, you know, keeps the business going really well. Super organized. Not like me. <laughs> <laughs> and you have five kids. Got five kids. Wow. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Now, let's get right into it. You have, you're, I mean, you're a two-time world champion in racquetball. What is it about racquetball that you love so much? I think what I liked about racquetball was just the challenge, right? And, you know, it started off with my mom being able to beat me, 16 years old. <laughs> you know, you think you're a great athlete right, or a good athlete, and then your mom comes and whips you in a, in a sport. Yeah. That, that's what, you know, really got me going. And then, of course, there's the next person, which was the old guys that had the ankle brace, knee brace, elbow brace, and they can barely walk, and I couldn't beat them. <laughs> had to beat them. Yeah. You know, and I just kind of kept going and kept going and kept going. So what, what propelled you to become the best in the world in racquetball? I think the, the reason, I mean, I, it's almost like you crack a code or you figure something out. And I, I realized that it was about repetition. Yeah. And I think that's what I also enjoyed about racquetball is that you could, you know, in a box, like, you know, 40 by 20. Yeah. The balls never go too far away. So, like, I can hit the balls over and over. I could hit thousands of each shot every single day and just repetition, repetition, repetition. And I realized how, you know, important that is. Jeez. Man, that's, I'm, to be a world champion in one sport is amazing. But, I mean, you're a, you're a world champion in three sports. I mean, that's crazy, Egan. <laughs> now, why did you stop racquetball, and why did you get started into jujitsu? So, the reason I stopped racquetball is eventually it just kind of, not only did I get worn out with it a little bit, but you know, I had an injury. And then when I was recovering from that injury, I couldn't, I, at a certain point, I realized like I wasn't going to be number one again. I didn't want to be top five for the next couple of years and then slowly go to the top 10 and then pretty soon, you know, just be washed up, right? So I thought I'd just quit, you know, a little bit early. Yeah. I mean, I probably could have played another two, three years and kept traveling, but I wanted to change a little bit. And then, you know, I got it. Um, I got into jujitsu because of my brother, my younger brother. He started jujitsu and then you know, we had a little street fight and uh, I watched it. I mean, the awesomeness of it where, yeah. you know, he had the fight in total control without having to strike. And I thought, wow, that's really great. And I, that's what I want to do. So what, what else about jujitsu do you love? I think that what I really like about jujitsu is just about, it's like playing chess, like physically. You know, and the other thing that I really liked about jujitsu was it's, it's not striking and you can control a lot of a fight just by, and you have to have a lot of confidence in what you do to, you know, not have to hit someone. Yeah. Now, what caused, what caused you to become the best in jujitsu in the world? I think jujitsu, one of the things was, I mean, you know, when I first started jujitsu and I really liked it, it was intriguing, like all the things I just said, but what was even more intriguing was there was nobody but only Brazilians that won world titles in Brazil. No one else from anywhere else in the world. So they say, like, oh, only Brazilians can do it. So huh. like, whoa, that's interesting. <laughs> now, now we're talking my, my game. So that's why I really wanted to do it, right? I wanted to be the first non-Brazilian to win a world title in Brazil. 
And that's what drove me. And again, same thing. It was another sport where you could do repetitions. Yeah. And the same thing from racquetball. I brought that same mindset about focusing and being, you know, short workouts, but lots of repetition in it. Wow. And then so you started into MMA, mixed martial arts, mm -hmm. and you're a five-time world champion yeah. in mixed martial arts. Why, why did you leave jiu-jitsu to do MMA? You know, it was by accident, right? I took the place of my brother, one of the fights he couldn't fight, okay. I went and fought that fight for him. And then it just led to, you know, getting paid to fight. And I never enjoyed fighting. I mean, I, I never did the whole, my whole career. Every time before a fight, I'd be like, I'm never doing this again. This is it. And then, of course, it's do it again. Yeah. But it's so challenging because it's like, it's not just like one sport. There's like eight different sports mixed in one. And you got to figure out when do you strike? When do you strike with your knees, your hands, your elbow, your kicks? When do you take it into a wrestling mode? When do you take it to a judo mode? And when do you take it to a jiu-jitsu mode? You got to be able to function on all those different lines. And I think that's what was intriguing about fighting for me. In split seconds, too. In split seconds. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's like strategy yeah. and tactics yeah. are critical. Exactly. Wow. So what's your most memorable experience uh, as an MMA athlete? I think the most memorable, hmm, I mean, there's a lot of different memorable times in MMA, but I think the, the one that really stood out was my, my comeback. Yeah. So I was 43 years old, and I made a comeback, and I fought a 21-year-old. I think, you know, like anything else, you always expect, you're expecting to win, yeah. but you also know that, you know, you're not going to, I mean, it's going to be a tough win. And I think that's what I, you know, that was my most memorable because I was planning to go the whole distance in that fight and it ended up finishing in 57 seconds. So <laughs> that was memorable. Yeah, because you had retired yeah. and then you came out of mm -hmm. retirement to mm -hmm. do that fight. Exactly. And you won it in yeah. 57 <laughs> yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even one minute, huh? Yeah, and it was, I mean, it had some close calls. I mean, a kick just missed me with just skin the top of my head. I mean, oh. yeah, so it was, a, it was a scary fight. Wow. Yeah. So what, what's the worst injury you ever had vegan you know that i haven't you know i had a fractured eye orbit from from uh sparring um broke a finger but from fighting itself yeah not that bad at all Jeez. increased cartilage in my rib but nothing major wow yeah. lucky <laughs> yeah pretty lucky yeah so, so then you started um, Egan's Boot Camp. You're mm -hmm. the founder and owner. Mm -hmm. And your wife, Marcia, you guys are fitness and health experts. Mm -hmm. And why did you start Egan's Boot Camp? Well, it started off, wait, before we started Egan's Boot Camp, I started this thing called The Studio. And okay. it was more based upon martial art type training for regular people and not people who really wanted to fight. And then that failed miserably. Right? And as we were failing, Marcia goes, hey, we should try this boot camp stuff. I'm like, oh man, if it's going to be aerobic classes, I'm not in. <laughs> if it's going to be, you know, this Taibo or any of these other kind, no, I'm not in. Because, you know, those are, hey, they're great workouts. Yeah. And, you know, not that I'm trying to belittle it, but coming from a real fighting and then you do, you know, turbo kickboxing or something <laughs> like that, it's not real fighting, right? Yeah. So I didn't want to do it. And I didn't want to do the Richard Simmons thing. And <laughs> I was like, that was a long time ago. <laughs> and she goes, just yes, try it. So, you know, I had to put my ego on the side and we tried it and, it was super fun. I mean, for me as an instructor and, you know, the people who did the class. Awesome. So what locations do you have and what are the training sessions like? So we have, we have Honolulu, the old Punahou Spa. We're oh, right great. in that corner. Yeah. And then we have uh, Kailua and we have Aiea. The training sessions are only 30 minutes long. And, you know, that's what I believe is the best way to train. You get in, you work hard, and, you know, you get out. And I think what's important to know about it is that, in 30 minutes, if you think about it, if it's a one-hour class, it's like, oh, i got to pace myself. If it's 30 minutes, you can do 30 minutes, and you can work hard for 30 minutes, and you can stay focused for 30 minutes. Yeah. And, you know, make the most of your time. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all you really need. Well, Egan, a lot of my friends do your Egan's Boot Camp, and they absolutely love it. And they all tell me two things. They go, it's really <laughs> tough, but it's really fun. Yeah. And they get results. I mean, mm -hmm. it's guaranteed results. I yeah. mean, they listen to you. They listen mm -hmm. to Marcia yep. and all your trainers. I mean, they, yeah. they're committed. Yeah. Now, you also train Hawaii Five O's, Alex O'Loughlin, yeah. and Scott Kahn. Yeah. How is it working with those guys? So working with them is a little different because uh, what it is is they really want the training in, in martial arts, so in jiu-jitsu, basically. Okay. And, you know, jiu-jitsu is one of those sports where you work every muscle in your body. You got to work your mind a lot while you're doing it. And... 
you know, the training with them goes really well for, you know, it's a good workout for me. Yeah. And, you know, like Alex, I've progressed him from white belt. Now he's a brown belt. And, you know, he's, he's going to be a black belt someday. And besides just training, it's like jujitsu is a lot to do with life. Yeah. You know, so it helps him out on the show. And same with Scott. You know, Scott's a black belt now. Jeez. Yeah, and he started with me in the, in the second season or the first season. And he was a blue belt. So he's moved all the way to black belt. Well, and those guys, I mean, they're such nice guys. Yeah. I mean, guys. and what they're doing for Hawaii is amazing. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, what you're doing for Hawaii is amazing, <laughs> too. I mean, you're helping improve countless people's lives. Now, why, why is fitness and health such a passion of yours? You know, I, I think fitness and health is a passion of mine. Um, and I just realized it recently that it, that's what it was. Because it, I talk about jujitsu, I talk about racquetball, I talk about MMA. All of those things I, had, I was super passionate about, but I kind of like racquetball. I never even touch the racket anymore. I don't even look at it. You know, and, you know, jujitsu, I still do. MMA, not really that interested in it. But the thing, the common thread is, is physical fitness. Right? And I realized, like, at a certain point, like, if you don't have your fitness and you don't have your health, it doesn't matter what else you have in life. You can't enjoy it to the fullest. Right? And the quality of your life isn't going to be great. I feel like that's why I have such a passion for fitness, not only for myself, but for everyone else. Oh, and I can feel that, too. I mean, I feel your passion, Egan. Now, when you guys, when you're doing the trainings at mm -hmm. Egan's Boot Camp, what specific things are there, if you can share just some of the exercises that you guys do? So what we, what we try to focus on is, is a thing called afterburn. So what it is is everyone's had it at some point in their life where they did something and they worked really hard, and then they're driving home and they're still sweating. They take a shower and they're still sweating. That's yeah. afterburn. <laughs> and so what we try to create is that afterburn in 30 minutes. And then what that does is it makes you burn more calories at rest for the rest of the day, up to 36 hours. So you know, different, we have different days. Every day is a different workout. So Monday, we try to go a little slower because it's the day that there's most, the most heart attacks, and I don't want no one to die in my gym, right? <laughs> we don't so want we that. do like stations and a little slower movements. And Tuesday is what we call Tabata Tuesdays, which is high intensity, like real high intensity workouts where it's a um, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds rest. You do that for it. You know, eight times wow. and then Wednesday we have a different type of stations and then Thursday is like an MMA where they get to hit the heavy bags and kick shields and, and then Friday is a like a fun Friday and so they, the workout's extra fun right? but you still get a workout and then Saturday we have a, a you know boxing classes Wow, that's a great so, structure yeah. that you guys have. So we change it up, right? So it's not boring. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely not boring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now I know why my friends tell me how tough it is, but, yeah. but it's fun. I yeah. mean, they all look forward to going, and they feel so great once they're done yeah. with the workout. That's cool. Now, you wrote a, a, an awesome book called <laughs> Becoming Relentless. Mm -hmm. What compelled you to write that book? So I, I wrote that book just because I had so many people telling me, you got to write a book. <laughs> you got to tell that story in a book. You got to, and you know, they kept saying that. And finally I was like, you know what, I'll just write a book. And you know, book writing for me, I mean, if you look at my past, it's like, obviously I'm not the scholar kind of guy, right? I'm more athletic or, or the dumb jock, right? The <laughs> stereotype. And so that was a challenge, you know, and I think just because it was such a big challenge, that's what even got me more so wanting to write a book. What's, what's two of the big parts in the book? that you want to share with our audience? I think the, the main part, or main reason I wanted to write that book is what I heard so much was people would be like, man, Egan, you know, you're such a great athlete, you know, and you've done so much stuff, you're so lucky. And so in that book, I share a lot about the obstacles and the, you know, all the things I had to overcome. And also, you know, showing the different instances where I'm not really that great of an athlete. I'm not, I, I'm not uncoordinated, but I'm a, you know, I'm a good athlete, but there's a lot better athletes than I was that should have been world champion but never did. And it's the obstacles that they couldn't overcome. And I feel like those obstacles is, is what I'm talking about in that book and how to overcome those obstacles and the mindset on how to do it. You know, in tough times, where do, you, where do you go? What do you fall back on? And that's kind of what my book's about. No, I know because I read it <laughs> oh, and I you. love the book. Oh, thank yeah, you. but I, I love the mindset and uh -huh. overcoming obstacles and really looking forward to challenges. Egan, we're going to take a quick break and when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond world championships. Oh, cool. You're watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Egan Inoy. We will be back in 60 seconds. Hey, aloha, everyone, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii. We air here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii time, trying to bring you issues about
about security that you may not know, issues that can protect your family, protect yourself, protect our community, protect our, our companies, the folks we work with, uh, please join us and I uh, hope you can um, maybe get a little different perspective on how to live a little safer. Aloha. Hi guys, I'm your host Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World. I'm, I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m. And this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier, and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you, and uh, aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is a world champion in three different sports. He is Egan Inoy, and today we are going beyond world championships. Egan, in my book, Beyond the Lines, I talk about creating a superior culture of excellence, and you obviously have that superior culture of excellence. What are some of the principles you live by? So, one, you know, one of the principles I live by is uh, non-negotiables. You got to have non-negotiables. And the non-negotiables are things, and, you know, every sport I did it, and just throughout my life I've, I've accumulated a few that even if I'm not competing or I'm not, you know, going out for an, another world title or anything, I still have those non-negotiables, you know. And one of them is, like, my protein shakes first thing in the morning. As soon as I wake up, I, that's a guarantee. Right? The other thing is I do my breathing exercises, and that's for sure. And, you know, getting to bed at a certain time and waking up at a certain time. Those are non-negotiables. And that's a kind of, to me, those are some of the principles that just start everything else. Yeah. And it's things that you have total control of. Totally, yeah. Now, in terms of discipline, I mean, every successful person, every successful team has discipline. And you got to have good habits. Mm -hmm. How do you build good habits? Uh, for m myself, I feel like building good habits is just being able to like repetition, like just like racquetball, you got to keep doing it, you know? And, and like what I shared with the boot camp the other day is something Mike Tyson said when he was, when he was coming up when Casamato was his coach. And he said that I think when you're doing things that you don't like to do act and do it as if you love it, and then you might love it one day. Yeah. Right. And I feel like that's exactly what it is, right? You just keep doing it. You keep digging, you keep grinding and pretty soon it becomes automatic. Yeah. No, I love that. And a, a huge part in my book, too, I talk about welcoming adversity, looking mm -hmm. forward to challenges. Mm -hmm. And you as a champion, I mean, you definitely have that right mindset, <laughs> looking forward to challenges. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest adversity you, ha you faced in your life, and how did you overcome it? I think the biggest adversity I had was um, traveling for a whole year. I traveled about 100,000 miles from Hawaii to all the different racquetball events, and I didn't win one single game. And racquetball is like we were playing three games out of five. 11 points I didn't win one of those games really three games everywhere across the United States for one whole year I think that was the toughest adversity because at the end of that year I got lucky and the coach wanted me to be an alternate for the for the US team for the first world championships in 1986 and I didn't want to go because I was like I don't, I'm, I don't want to be an alternate I want to be the world champ <laughs> yeah and you know my dad talked me out of it and to, you know basically told me you're such a punk I didn't know I raised such a punk that you wouldn't do it and I'm wow. like Wow. You know? <laughs> so I went. I jumped on that plane that night because I only had, you know, six hours to decide. And then when I got there, I was the first alternate. And then by the next morning, I was actually playing. And for the adversity there was so tough because I didn't win all year. I started thinking, like, do I even know how to win? I didn't even know if I knew how to win. And so I had to dig super deep and think about all the practice sessions, all the hours I spent, spent hitting ball after ball after ball, right? And then I had to build my confidence on what I did for practice. And that was the biggest, and that's where I think I made my biggest leap because I realized like, how good I was. Yeah. And until, up to that point, I didn't realize how good I was. So what else did you learn from your dad? Well, I learned, I mean, I learned a lot from my dad. And one of, them, one of the things, and you know, it goes back to that world championship. I was losing my first match. I was just getting murdered. I got murdered the first game. And I was about to lose my second game. And I thought to my dad, like, and my dad told me this, he goes, if you ever see a guy that's trying to look too pretty, you know, you can mess him up. And I'm like, how would you mess him up? Right? And he goes, you just fix their collar or do something. I don't know. So anyway, <laughs> this guy kept, when he walked by the glass court, he kept fixing his hair. 
So the next time he hit a nice shot, I was like, hey, good shot, and I missed his hair. <laughs> he didn't score a single point. I won that game that I was losing, and I won the tiebreaker. Wow. And from that day on, I realized how important mindset is. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Oh, that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> messing up the hair. Yeah, messing hey, up the hair. Egan, you know what's funny is they cannot mess up your that's hair right. now. That's right. That's why I shaved it off. Shave them off. <laughs> they can't get you back. Yeah, up. That's right. Now, everybody defines success in different ways. Mm -hmm. I want to know your definition of success. I think, well, to me, what I feel success is, is when you're doing something that you love. When you finally find um, what you're passionate about, what you enjoy, and then when you go to work, it's not really work. Yeah. You know, like I always tell my boot campers, I'm, man, I'm so lucky because I'm coaching you guys. This is my work. I love this. This is like the best thing I can do. And seeing you drop five pounds or you're getting more confident or you're getting more muscle tone, you know, make, helping everyone hit their goals, not only in the, in, in the gym, yeah. but when people hit those goals and build confidence, they hit their goals everywhere else in life. And that's what I love. It becomes contagious. Oh, totally. Yeah. So, Egan, why are you successful? Why? Yeah. I don't know. Thanks for saying that. I mean, I always think that maybe I'm not that successful. I'm always trying to be successful. And I feel like if I go back to my, um, what I say success is, it's because I'm getting to do what I really love. Yeah. No, yeah. totally. And, you know, you're a man of great character and very successful in business as well. And I want to know who was somebody that had a, Huge positive influence in shaping your character. I think I, I think there was not one person that that helped shape my character. I think it was a, you know the different coaches that I had along the way. Um, of course, my parents, uh, my grandparents. My my grandfather actually had a lot to do with how I think. You know, and and one of the things that um, my grandfather had told me once is, he said, "Ah, you know, you're an Asian guy." You cannot compete against the rest of the, you know, all the other guys. They're built for sports. You're not. <laughs> and like that really got my mindset thinking like, hey, you know, and then when people would say, oh, Ian, you, you, you're not going to make it in racquetball because, you know, all the best players are on the mainland. It's like, oh, really? I'll show you. Yeah. You can't be the best Bra Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy because it's only Brazilians. Oh, really? And that, you know, that mindset of you can't do something changed to you can do it. Yeah. Right. And, you know, my dad also told me something that also made it made a lot of sense is the days that I didn't feel like practicing, he goes, you know, Egan, the guy who's going to beat you, he's practicing when you're not. And that's, you know, something that I carry all throughout my life still to today. And it's choices that you make. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you have a conscious choice mm -hmm. and the power of choice yep. to make it, and it's up to you. Yep. And you can either improve your life or not. Mm -hmm. Now, exactly. I want to ask you, Egan, what, what is it? that you learned about yourself today versus you 20 years ago? <laughs> well, I think what I learned about myself today, I realize like now, I, th I feel like back before, it was that they didn't have that term ADD or ADHD, right? Yeah. And I realized like, that's me. I'm like <laughs> so ADD, like we can be talking, I can start talking about something else and, and come right back to it. And, you know, and I think that I've always been that way. And I never realized it. And what I do realize, though, is that if you can put that focus on something, that ADHD can be controlled a lot by, by focus and by doing something that you enjoy. Yeah. No, I like hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> ADD, ADHD. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so I want to know some of the best advice you've ever received from others, you know, through the years. Uh -huh. I and mean, we've all got some words of wisdom mm -hmm. from people. What are some words of wisdom you received? I think one of the best ones was one of my racquetball coaches. He told me, um, Ian, if you had to screw a screw in with a screwdriver, would you use a hammer? And then if you had to pound a nail in, would you use a screwdriver? And I was like, no, no. And he goes, well, that's what you got to figure out. When you're playing racquetball, you got to hit the right shots at the right time and not try to force it with the hammer every single time. And then I took that into everything that we do in life, and it's the same thing. Yeah. It's like when it's time to use the hammer, you gotta use the hammer. <laughs> when it's time to be more finesse and you gotta use a screwdriver, it's time to use a screwdriver. I think that's one of the greatest advices I've read. I like that one, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Wow. Yeah. Now, Egan, I wanna ask you, why do champions become champions? I think champions become champions because they put everything they got into it. And, you know, life becomes a little off balance because you're focused on one thing. And 
And I feel like in life, it's super, if you want to balance life, it's really tough to be a champion or be great at one thing. Yeah. Right? And I think that's why the people learn how to make sacrifices. They have discipline, they have perseverance, they can overcome obstacles. And you know, I always tell people, you know, what do you think of the word struggle? And a lot of people are like, oh. And I tell them, yeah, you gotta change that mindset. You gotta enjoy struggle because when you struggle, the greater struggles that you have, when you overcome that, you're that much better. Do you have a story about resiliency? <laughs> I probably do. I, 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 <laughs> I definitely do, and it can be you know something as simple as what I'm doing now, foil boarding. Yeah, it's like when you fall on a foil board, it, you know the board lifts up out of the water, and you're moving fast. And when you hit the water, I don't even have time to put my hands up before my head hits the water. Oh. You know, so the slap's pretty hard. I think you know it's a tough thing to to do, but the resilience of you know taking that chance that it's going to happen again, it's going to happen again. But you keep doing it, and keep doing it, and learn how to control it, and you know. That's a quick story that's recent for me. <laughs> yeah. No, I like the videos you post on yeah. Facebook about yeah. you doing the foiling. Uh -huh. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, yeah. and you're ripping them yeah, on that. Yeah, flying. So yeah. when you fall, I mean, mm -hmm. it hurts. Huh? Yeah, it does. It hurts. How often do you fall? I fall every day. <laughs> every day that I go, it's for sure I'm going to hit one. And, you know, if I don't, it's a lucky day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but you, you love that. I do. Yeah. I love that. That's my passion now. Okay. Now, Egan, what, well, personally, Okay. What's something that you want to accomplish in your future that you haven't done yet? You know, I, it, 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 for me, whatever I want to accomplish, it, it just kind of happens. Mm -hmm. So I don't necessarily always have like, okay, this is the next thing I want to do. I don't really have that right now. Yeah. I mean, right now it's foil boarding and just getting more consistent and being able to catch a lot of waves without having to lay down and paddle again. Yeah. I mean, those are my goals. And the other thing is like trying to help more people through our boot camps, you know, um, right now the promotion that we're doing now, we're bringing in some people that really have to lose weight, you know, to be healthy. Yeah. And like those things are like, that's what I love. Yeah. Helping those people. And you're helping tons of people. I hope so. I'm, I'm trying. We're, we're trying for sure. <laughs> I'm trying too. I'm trying to help <laughs> yeah, improve yeah, people. Yeah. Wow. Now, yeah. uh, before we wrap, I want to ask you one more question. Uh -huh. Who or what gives you fulfillment? You know, I think oh, what gives me a lot of fulfillment is really like helping people, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, just, just to hear someone say, man, I feel so much better or my energy level is so much better or, or now I can do this and I couldn't do it before. Like that for me is fulfillment. Yeah. That's it's, a lot. It's like when they win, we win. Exactly. Right? Totally. We feel that. Yeah. And if yeah. they lose, we feel like we lose too. Exactly. You know, and it goes way beyond like, you know, like all the world championships that I've won. It's like, that's nothing. This is the greatest thing that I've ever done. Well, Egan, I totally appreciate you being on the show today. Thank I mean, you, you are somebody that me. definitely goes beyond the lines. <laughs> I mean, you're awesome. I mean, you have great yeah. character. You're an outstanding person. And I want everybody to go to Egan's boot camp. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Egan. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. And a special thank you to my clothing sponsor, Iolani Incorporated. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com, and my book is available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. I hope that Egan and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.